initiating moisture. Welcome to the Moist Meter. Today we're taking a look at The Boys Season 3. And it's another banger. This show doesn't miss. Every season is getting better. Like, it's a show that started out amazing and has only gotten better. So right away, Season 3 kicks off with one of the wildest episodes in television history. This is a minor spoiler, I suppose, but it's all within the first 10 minutes of Episode 1. So they're hunting down uh, a bad soup with the power to shrink. And he uses that power for sounding. If, if you don't know what sounding is, God bless your soul, I suppose. It's putting things into your dickhole. So he shrinks himself down to a very small level and then crawls inside of a guy's penis and gives him a urethra massage. But he had just snorted coke beforehand and he sneezes and then expands back to normal size and splits him in half, instantly killing him, sending blood and guts flying all over the place. That shit was so wacky. I would have never expected I'd watch a show where someone's exploring a wiener as if it's like a cave in Indiana Jones or something. It was so unhinged, but it works really well in the show. Like, it was fun to watch. Like, the entire season went really hard. A lot happened, and I think every episode was great. The only one that was a bit underwhelming was, unfortunately, f the finale, which I just watched. I know a lot of people were pretty disappointed with it, and I'll also admit I was a little let down. It's not bad by any means, but every episode this entire season kept ramping up and setting up huge stakes and huge things coming, and then the finale kind of under-delivers on a lot of it, but it puts a lot of pieces in place for next season that I think is going to be outstanding. So I really like where it leaves off, though the, like, the final fights as well as some of the, the later moments just didn't have that same oomph you would expect. And there wasn't even a single time where they went back inside of a cock, which was a little upsetting. Like, you know, they, they really struck gold in episode one. Now let's break it down a little bit. I'm, again, gonna avoid as many spoilers as possible. This season introduces a new villain. So it's not just Homelander now. They bring Soldier Boy back into the fold, who was basically the original Homelander. He was the face of Vought, and just like the most popular and the strongest superhero in the world. And everyone thought he was dead. However, he's not. He was being captured, he was captured and tortured by the Russians, and the boys inadvertently release him again, so he becomes the main big bad, and it's it's really good. Soldier Boy is a super interesting character. He's not, like, as good of a villain as Homelander by any means, because Anthony Starr is one of the most talented actors I've ever seen. Anthony Starr as Homelander is probably the best villain I've ever watched on screen, and, and I don't say that lightly. But I now cannot even look at Anthony Starr without seeing Homelander. I watched a fucking interview with him in the cast one time, and I just saw Homelander. I thought at any moment he'd turn around and take someone's eyes out of their skull or something if he didn't like one of their jokes. Like, he has truly become Homelander to me, which has never really happened for any other character. So, massive props, and he does a great job this season as well, of course. In this season, Homelander's more than just, like, this over-the-top evil villain. They actually show a lot of human sides here, even more so than previous seasons. They really, like, do a lot of, like, heavy lifting to make you almost feel for him and question whether or not, like, his real motive. Because before all this, you'd be like, yeah, he's pretending to be nice or pretending to be on someone's side, but he's actually going to do something evil. Whereas here, it's like, well, no, he might actually care about Ryan or he might actually value Black Noir as a, as a teammate and a friend. You know, it's just so good. But anyway, back to Soldier Boy. He's where you're going to spend a lot of the time, like, seeing him do shit and learning about him. He's got a very interesting past. And his main objective is, of course, to get revenge for being captured. So he's wreaking havoc. And it just becomes another massive problem for the crew to try and navigate. The writing in this show, I think, is just superb. I think it's so good. They do a great job of making you care about most of the characters, as well as just setting up a really interesting story with a lot of moving parts to it. And it always does try and, like, turn a mirror to, like, the real world, so it'll criticize a lot of things that happen in, like, actual society. And I hate using that word. The Jokers really ruin that word. But, like, there's a lot of moments throughout The Boys where it's poking fun at things in the real world, and whether or not you appreciate that or not, that's entirely up to you. But I always find it at least interesting that they subtly jab at, like, all sides of things. 
I think they do a decent job of not being super on the nose while also still making it pretty comical. But where I think they absolutely excel is in the characters. I think Butcher is such a fucking great character where sometimes you're pumping your fist like, yeah, go Butcher, rip his fucking tits off and shove him in his asshole. Let's go Butcher, that's so cool. And then the other minute you're like, damn, fuck you Butcher. This is all your fault. You're such a piece of shit. Like they just, they have such a great line with Butcher where he's awesome sometimes you know he's doing the right thing and then other times he's really crossed the line and you as a viewer are like damn that's too far and a lot of things that happen afterwards are completely because you're an asshole you caused a lot of bad stuff because you're an asshole like even though your intentions are good overall you went too far and you made things worse i, I love what they do with butcher and i really loved what they did with butcher and huey this season because they gave them access to powers not a spoiler it's in the promo material they gave them access to superpowers, and I think that works so well here. Now it just gives this entire crew more options for handling the problems. So you have people that don't have powers in the crew that are coming up with schemes and plans that uh, are more in the shadows and more, like, deeper, I suppose. Like, they have to be careful about their moves, whereas with Butcher and Huey, now that they have access to powers, their plans more become... Let's just go beat the shit out of these superheroes, get the answers we need, and just start ripping scalps off. And I actually think that's super cool. And it feels earned, because we've spent so much time with these characters, constantly having the odds against them, not being able to actually fight on even footing with the people they try and hunt down or the people they try and save. Now they do have access to powers, and it lets them directly get involved in these fights and... Just really in the mega mix of things here, and I like that a lot. I really did. I really appreciated that. And it didn't like overstay its welcome where it just became like superheroes fighting each other. They still had to outsmart, outmaneuver, and come up with good plans. But I like that they now have the ability to directly confront their most vicious villains. You know, like, they actually fight Homelander. And it, they don't just get like insta-gibbed like it's Team Fortress 2. They actually can put up a fight now because they have the access to the powers. And I thought that just felt great. I think that was just such a nice payoff to see them actually get to that point to be able to fight. Another standout character this season was Maeve. Maeve had so much to do this season and did a lot of cool shit. Maeve was integral to this season's plot. Like without her, a lot of things just don't happen. And I thought she was great. Just really shined this entire season. Starlight as well. But on Starlight's side of things, it was mainly her use of social media, which isn't super cool but when she was like not just instagram living information and like actually contributing the fights and shit she was great like in the relationship between starlight and huey of course again gets like really strained because of difference and uh without getting into spoiler just like a difference uh, of opinion on how to handle handle homelander and soldier boy it, the relationship of course is well written like i i actually care about their relationship I feel sad when they're not happy together, <laughs> as goofy as that is to say. I don't know, I just really like everything about the boys. I, I love the way that they've crafted the narrative, I love the characters. Uh, they even do a lot with A-Train this season, uh, showing like the family side of things, as well as him wanting to do good, but just not being able to. He's so disconnected from like the reality of things, he can't quite figure out how to do things properly, so every time he tries to help, he makes everything much worse. And it's sad. It, like, The Deep is just, again, a goofy comic relief character. They don't do much to make you like The Deep. All he does this season is fuck Octopus Pussy a lot. Like, he just gets multiple blowjobs from Octopi. Like, that's mainly his contribution. Like, he's just a dumb character. He's supposed to be laughed at. And he does that successfully. Now, there are a couple things I do want to bring up that aren't, like, amazing with the show. I think that they're using Compound V and V alternatives really, like, excessively. It seems like they're selling Compound V at gas stations at this point. Anytime they needed Compound V, it was just like a brisk walk down the street away to go grab it. It was never a challenge. Like, there was never a moment in this entire season where they're like, damn, we need more V. If only we could go get it. It's always like, we need more V. I'll just go get it. Like, it was never a big obstacle. In the beginning, they set it up like it was really hard to get. Like, this is coveted, sacred serum that, you know, there's not much of it in the world and it's super guarded, hard to come by. Whereas here, it's like, yeah, I've got like 15,000 pounds worth just in my garage. It, it just, I don't know. I felt like that was a little excessive how often they could rely on it. And they, they used the V a lot here. And they had to keep going to Vot Labs to get the V. 
and it was really easy. It seems like all you have to do to get Compound V is just knock on the door and ask for it. So I thought that was a little lazy, though I understand why they didn't want to spend too much time focusing on how they acquire it because that's not super interesting, but you set it up as this crazy compound that's really hard and really secretive. To, it, like, you can't just make it super plentiful all of a sudden. And not to bring up the first episode too many times, but that shrinking guy, I actually do think could have been the strongest character in the show. This goes into like the Ant-Man and the Thanos' butthole thing. Unironically, after seeing it in this episode, I genuinely think that would probably kill Homelander and pretty much any superhero in the show. If the shrinking guy just went inside their cock or butt and then just fully expanded again, I, I can't imagine, like I don't see how the character survives that. Like even if they're so powerful, like if he goes inside Homelander's ass and tries to like go back to normal size to blow him up, even if Homelander's body is so strong it like kills him inside of him, he's just gonna like internally drown from all the blood and guts from the shrinking man exploding inside of him. Like I just don't see how any character survives that. So I, I actually think that could be the strongest character in the entire Boys franchise. Just wanted to bring that up. But anyway, uh, plugging the Boys Season 3 into the Moist Meter, I'm giving it a nice 90%. I would have given it a 95%, but like I said, I do think the finale is a little underwhelming. They set everything up to be absolutely huge to finish it off, and it just really wasn't. Uh, without getting into spoilers, I can't really explain where things start to get a little messy in the finale, but they just make it a little underwhelming. I love where it ends up. I love the, the final conclusion, where everyone is and everything that's happening to them, I think is fantastic. But, like, everything getting there is kind of lackluster, which is a real shame. Because I really thought they were going to send us into Season 4 with, like, this fucking wild bang. And it just didn't quite pull it off. It was just a little weak. But other than that, it's another outstanding season. The boys is still absolutely crushing it. And I can't wait for Season 4. That's about it. See ya.